All right, next thing we're talking about is the first of two ACC games that we're going to end the show with. Louisville at number 11, Clemson. 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time on ESPN. Dalton, this is Clemson's toughest opponent since week one when they got blown out by Georgia. 34-3 loss to Georgia. They've rattled off six straight victories since then. But it's fair to say those six wins have not come against the stiffest competition so far. None of those six wins have come over a team that's even in the top 55 of PFS power rankings. All of them are outside the top 55 teams in college football. This week, Clemson has an opportunity to prove, hey, we're actually legitimate against a good Louisville team. Right now, they're number 34 in our power ranking. Cardinals lost by seven points to Miami in the game that we went to a couple weeks ago. So Louisville's already proven, hey, we can hang with the elite teams in the ACC, and they're going to try to do the same thing here against Clemson. No, I, I, I'm with you. I think it is. It's why we haven't talked about Clemson, what, since week one against no. Georgia, have we? We haven't really gotten to them, and they figured some things out, I think especially offensively. Now now it gets into the, the meat of their schedule, right? They have to play Louisville. I think they're playing um, – they have to go to Virginia Tech – you know, they, I think you start getting into some of the tougher games, and we really see what Clemson looks like now. And as as they start, at least what they think will be prep for the ACC title game, but they still have to take care of business. And Louisville's their first, um, I don't want to say real opponent in a long time, but one that might be able to stack up with them. Absolutely. So, Dawn, you had the Clemson offense in this one who has a quarterback in Cape Klubnik. Looks like one of the most improved quarterbacks in the nation so far. So what should we be looking out for when he has the ball? So the, the big thing, I'll start with Klubnik, and it's he's just been better and more a bit more accurate throwing the ball downfield than he was last year. Last year, he only threw 28.6% of his passes uh, at 10 or more air yards, right? It, they just weren't getting they weren't working the ball downfield that number is up to 36.2 percent this year last year it was a 73 passing grade this year is a 94 i believe it's top five in the country actually it's actually the fourth best in the country a 94 passing grade on 10 plus yard throws 13 big time throws 14 touchdowns what you're seeing from Cade klubnik now it's not perfect yet it's not totally consistent yet but it's i, I think a lot better footwork and a lot more confidence Throwing the ball downfield. You know what? It's kind of that, that old saying, if he's even, he's leaving on, on the yeah. back end there when the receivers get – he's letting the ball go. I think last year there was a bit more um, – he was a bit more hesitant, and I don't – I think his footwork is a little bit better. It's still a work in progress, but you can see – the, his lower body being a little more in sync, following through a little more on these throws and throwing with more conviction. So he's working the ball downfield, and that's going to be a big thing against Louisville's secondary – which to me has been a problem for them all season. I, yeah. I, I just think their defensive line is good. I like it. The secondary's, I, I think, been kind of disappointing. They've been giving up too many explosive plays, okay? Third lowest coverage grade in the Power Five against 10-plus yard throws. We, we saw it in person yeah. when, when we saw them play Miami. It, was like, it felt like Cam Ward, that he had a completion down the seam anytime he wanted. And it was just that's the way it's been. Louisville, it's a lot of zone coverage, and they've been kind of just not tracking the football very well, I think, on these vertical throws. They've given up a lot more points this year. I thought their defense would be a lot better. So the combination to me of Klubnik's kind of new ability to get the ball downfield and Louisville this season giving up a lot of those explosive plays downfield I think is a real problem for the Cardinals. Absolutely is. And honestly, on the other side of the ball, it's about Tyler Shuck and Clemson's pass rush and whether or not they can get after Tyler Shuck, who mentioned before, Dolan, this is a matchup of two quarterbacks who have been some of the most improved that we've had in college football, Kate Klubnik and Tyler Shuck as well. He's a 90.1 passing grade this year. Last year, 57.9 at Texas Tech in 2023. The biggest reason for that jump has been how good he's been when he has time in the pocket. The Richard Sr. has a 92.4 passing grade when he's kept clean. Only Jackson Dart and Shador Sanders have higher clean pocket passing grades than Tyler Shuck so far this year among all quarterbacks in the country. On those clean pocket passing plays, he has 12 big-time throws and only one turnover-worthy play. When he's under pressure, he's still pretty good. I think he's like a top 25 passing grade under pressure, but still, it falls to a 62.3. So you go from a 92.4 to a 62.3, six big-time throws, Six turnover worthy plays. So he is noticeably worse when he's under pressure. And Louisville's offensive line 
has been kind of below average in protecting the quarterback this year, even more than below average. They're 111th in pressure rate allowed this year at 36.4%. So fortunately for Louisville, though, Clemson's pass rush hasn't really been as formidable as it's been in prior years. Right now, they're 61st in pass rushing grade at 70.4. The two years before that, they were 20th and 5th. So 61st right now, the defensive line is just not as good as they've been in the past at rushing the passer. Peter Woods is playing out of position right now at edge defender when we think he should be a defensive tackle, honestly. Um, they've only pressured the quarterback on 29.3% of their dropbacks this year, 83rd in the country. Only one of their defensive linemen, TJ Parker, the edge defender, has a pass rushing grade above a 70 this year. It's really been a struggle for Clemson's passers. It's been kind of average, honestly. So if Shuck has time in the pocket, he should be able to find uh, Louisville's really talented pass catchers like Ja'Cory Brooks and Chris Bell. Not Colin Lacey anymore because he actually decides to redshirt the rest of the year. So they should still find other receivers, though. And right now, Louisville is eighth in receiving grade this year. Clemson's secondary is very strong, the 35th in coverage grade. But they're going to need some help up front from their defensive line to just disrupt Tyler Shuck, his, his rhythm and his timing, or else it could be a uh, dif- it could be a difficult day for them to uh, cover these receivers. Yeah, I agree. I think I think we both agree that Shuck has been a lot better this year than, than maybe we thought. We thought quarterback would be the biggest question for Louisville coming into the season, and it actually has wound up being their defense. But Shuck has performed well, and you're right. If you don't disturb him, he's look. He's a veteran guy who's played a lot of football despite some injuries throughout his career. I, I, he's been better than I expected this year and he's used his weapons well absolutely so Dawn in Clemson's hardest game since their Georgia loss in week one will they pass it or will Louisville uh, pull off the upset I, I I like Clemson in this game look first of all they very rarely lose home games it's one of the hardest road environments to go play in and I, I just think this Louisville secondary it's it's been one of the more disappointing units in college football this year at Klubnik there's definitely improvement in Klubnik as a passer I, I don't know we'll see in some real tests here if he's one of the best quarterbacks in the country and, and things like that I don't think we have him in that tier quite yet we need to see it against the better teams you know if we, we got Louisville here we got Virginia Tech coming up we got maybe Miami in an ACC title game these are some big games coming play for Pitt him. too they play yeah. Pitt too who's, who's got a really fun defense to watch we're getting there next but South Carolina at the end of the year too that yeah, it, yeah. Yeah, that we, there's some real tests coming here, yeah. and this is this is the first one. Although I think Louisville's secondary gives them enough chances to make throws down the field to guys like Antonio Williams and T.J. Moore. I've got Clemson 34, Louisville 24. I think Louisville can put up points on this defense. Their offense, especially Jacoby Brooks, has been really good. I love Isaac Brown too, the running back, the young running back. He's been really good, but. They, you know, Clemson still has balance with Phil Moffa in the run game, too. They get the ball downfield. I think Klubnik has another good day in this one against a struggling Louisville secondary. All right, yeah. I got uh, Clemson winning as well, and even a closer game, though. I got 31-27. to 27. I think Kate Klubnik, Tyler Shuck, two of the most improved quarterbacks in the country, like I said. I think the Tigers will win in a close one, but I think Louisville's going to put up a fight in this one. I don't think this is going to be an easy victory for Clemson at all, and I think Louisville covers the 11-point spread uh, that they have right now. So Clemson winning 31-27. to 27.